Hello, this is Logan Penny, Director of Imagination at the Hollows Camp. I've been using the Pixel Lab for quite a few months now, almost close to two years, basically since I started my motion journey. And the products that Jorn offers, as well as tutorials and freebies, have really accelerated my learning path inside of Cinema 4D and using Redshift and Octane. The Redshift mutating materials, the metal, the wood, and the stone, probably my most heavily used product by the Pixel Lab and my most favorite. I've been particularly obsessed with learning Unreal Engine for the past few months and I decided that I wanted to bring my Redshift mutating materials into Unreal Engine. So this is a short tutorial just showing my workflow and how I did that. Enjoy! I chose two of my favorite materials inside of Redshift, one of them being the charred wood and the other one was the leaf foil gold. And as you can see, it's a very comprehensive set of materials, and I really enjoy using them. I have both the Redshift materials, as well as standard Cinema 4D materials, and that's due to the fact that currently Unreal Engine doesn't support importing straight Redshift or straight Octane or straight Arnold materials, so you need to set up kind of proxies with the standard Cinema 4D material, and then once we're inside Unreal, I'll show you how to tweak them. Using a cube as a demo, I'm dropping that into the scene without making any changes to the dimensions, adding a slight fillet, making the shape editable, then moving its axis to the very bottom so that it drops on the floor inside of Unreal Engine. I find that switching the texture from UV mapping to cubic improves its look. Using the access center tool, opening that up and then changing the Y axis slider to minus 100 hitting execute will effectively drop the access to the center of the floor. I'm also adding a sphere to the scene to display our second material, changing it to icosahedron, and then setting the segments to 64 and 63. Applying the gold leaf foil material to the sphere, then changing the projection to spherical. I'm not going to waste your time showing you how to set this up in Redshift or texture and light it properly. Just did a quick demo scene, and I will be erasing all this stuff and bringing it into Unreal anyways. All right, erase the plane, erase the area light, erase the dome light, we're left with default lighting. Now what we are going to do is place the Cinema 4D materials on top of the Redshift materials and get rid of the Redshift materials entirely. Delete the floor material, then save the projects with assets. And the reason we're doing this is because we want the texture maps that we can use inside of Unreal. Holding Alt, Click and drag the Cinema 4D material on top of the Redshift material to replace it. After you've saved this file out, download and open up Unreal Engine 4.26 and open up a new blank level inside of the project that you want to load the materials into. I made a new folder, Pixel Lab Mat Test, and that's where I'm going to be bringing in my experiments. Making another new subfolder and labeling it Gold Wood Test. This is why it's important to save the project with assets so that we can go back and find the assets inside of our saved project file, import them inside of Unreal, and start mapping them. For organizational purposes, I'm making another new folder called Textures and dragging all of the textures inside of it. At the top of Unreal, you should see a button beside Settings that says Datasmith. If you do not have this button, click on Settings, then Plugins. Inside of Plugins, type in C4D, Search for the Datasmith C4D plugin, click Enable, restart the editor, and then meet me back here. Click on the Datasmith button, then navigate to the folder where you have saved your project from Cinema 4D. The simple scene imported just fine was only a sphere and a cube after all. More complicated scenes seem to have more complicated issues. Keep that in mind. Alright, our cinema primitives are loaded up, and I'm going to scale up the floor so that we just have a bigger working plane and begin to dive in and show you exactly how to get the materials dialed in. Click on the materials folder and we have our charred wood and gold material that we imported from Cinema 4D. I'm going to take our imported textures and copy that folder into our material folders so the textures and materials are in one spot. Double click on charred wood and let's get mapping this. I work on a double screen and find it highly effective but since this is a tutorial, I'm opening up a second content browser window 
and trying to swap back and forth between that browser window that has our imported textures and the material instance where we map those textures. In the details section, you can see we have parameter groups and 00 global shows us all of the various things that we can enable. Starting with the color channel, I'm going over and activating use color map, then activating the color map. Then once that is activated, I'm going to activate the normal mode of that color map. When normal has been ticked, I then can activate the actual color map box going into my second content browser grabbing the color or albedo or diffuse of my material, the charred wood, and dragging it over. The next thing I'm gonna grab is my ambient occlusion. So I'm gonna activate my ambient occlusion, activate the box to the right, scroll down to ambient occlusion, activate the ambient map, find my ambient texture, click on it, and hit the arrow, bringing it into the slot. Moving right along, grab our normal, scroll down, find the normal area, there's normal, tick on normal map, find our normal map for our charred wood, drag it or click on the arrow to bring it into existence. Okay, the material is starting to look better. Normal strength, if you tick that on, you can start messing around with stuff, um, but be careful, you can get some really nasty results really fast. Okay, find roughness. They don't have roughness, but roughness is actually under reflection. So scroll down to 02 reflectance, activate the roughness map, and drag and drop our roughness into that area. The last one that we need to add in is the displacement. And unfortunately, the C4D master material with the data smith does not have displacement built in. So I went inside the parent material and built my own displacement. Unfortunately, it will not look like this for you unless you go into the master material and create your own displacement for import. Same workflow as we've been doing, activate the displacement channel, activate the displacement map, load in the texture of the height map into the displacement. Displacement and tessellation will have an impact on game performance, so use with caution. All the textures are mapped to the proper materials. Now we can go in and play with settings if we like. Um, here I'm just tinkering with specular to see if I can get more of a dry wood or a wet wood look. And... Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with the results so far. I went through the same process with our gold texture and I'm applying it to the sphere. And there you have it. We have our pixel lab mutating materials, the charred wood and the gold leaf foil brought over from Cinema 4D using Redshift and working almost identically inside of Unreal Engine. Really cool. I briefly wanted to showcase the Cinema 4D Data Smith Master Material. Um, it looks like a beast. It really isn't. Uh, you just need to break it off into chunks. It's been labeled and commented very nice. Uh, so the displacement that I built, take it with a grain of salt. It's still a work in progress, and I'm not sure that it's 100% accurate at this point. I'll make a follow-up tutorial when I have it fully dialed in. Thanks for watching. Bye now.